everyone. Today I am so excited to be using the Nikon 135mm f1.8 Polina lens. Today we're going to be doing a portrait photo shoot with this lens on the Nikon Z8. I'm going to be sharing with you lots of unedited photos, my thoughts on this lens and some video tests as well. So let's get started. I'm on the lookout for Bokeh. <laughs> let's start sitting there. So I want to get like some of those flowers. Oh, that's so cool. Do you want to sit with your knees facing towards me? Yes, that is so cool. Today I'm using this lens on the Nikon Z8 and in case you are new to my reviews, I have lots of unedited straight out of camera photos to show you today throughout the video at 100% crop. So make sure you're watching this video in 4K so you can see all the details. We are going to check out the video performance of this lens a little later on in this video too. My first thought when I started flicking through the photos I captured is, wow, this lens is impressive. I feel like it look cool if you stand just here. Yeah. This 135mm produces high quality images with beautiful clarity and sharpness. There is a nice amount of contrast throughout the frames and the colors are rich and true to life. This lens is super flattering for portraits. It has a good level of sharpness where you can see plenty of details while still retaining lots of character. Do you want to come this way? Maybe if you stand just here would look cool. I need to go like down the street. <laughs> there we go. All right, so this is a full body shot. In terms of autofocus performance, I was letting the camera and lens do all the work to see how well it can perform. I had the Z8 set to people subject detection in continuous autofocus, and I was using a few different focus area modes, including subject tracking autofocus, auto area autofocus, and 3D tracking. Do you wanna try, if you do like a little bit of like a sway kind of motion, might be cool. I found autofocus was extremely sticky on my subject, as you can see if you're keeping an eye on the picture in picture, and I was able to completely rely on it throughout the entire photo shoot. I never once felt the need for a manual focus point. And then stay there. I feel like if we sit on the stool there, it would look amazing too. Yeah, that's cool. Now I can actually see the layers of all the flowers too. We've got it like in front and behind and just all around. So pretty. Focus accuracy is fantastic in this lens as well. I did not experience any significant eyelash focusing. I am really pleased to see that the majority of my photos had focus directly on the iris. From my experience, this is a lens you can absolutely rely on and I would expect to see similar results on the Nikon Z9 and ZF. And then do you wanna sit facing towards me? Yeah, that's cool. This 135mm f1.8 planar lens weighs around 995 grams, which is pretty standard for a fast telephoto prime like this. It has an 82mm filter size, a maximum aperture of f1.8, a minimum aperture of f16, and a minimum focus distance of 82cm. It features an AF to MF switch, two customizable buttons, a focus ring, and a customizable aperture ring. In the future, I would love to see Nikon add a physical lock button for the aperture ring as it is extremely easy to move it without even realizing, or perhaps even an option to have your aperture change click so you can actually feel when it changes. You will see a couple of times I was shooting at f2. Once, I even took a couple of photos at f2.5 before I realized I had accidentally moved the ring just while I was holding the camera to take photos. If you watched my initial video about the Nikon Z8, which I'll leave linked down below in case you missed it, you will see I did this with the Z85mm f1.2 lens as well. I want to try and also get the sun behind you. So this here is like a really close up headshot. While the ring can be locked off or remapped via the camera, personally, I just love a good old mechanical switch. I have virtually nothing negative to say about this lens. It's so, so stunning in both image quality and performance, but I do have two things that come to mind to consider about it. The first is something that stood out to me while using it on the day. When this lens is paired with the Nikon Z8, it's quite a heavy rig to be shooting with for hours. Oh, this is like tiring my arm. Let's walk up a little bit that way yep. as well. A 135mm prime lens is a lens I use almost all day during a wedding, and it would be heavy to have on me, whether it's in my camera bag or hanging from my holdfast straps, while I'm using it for eight to 12 hours. 
Personally, if I did wedding photography full time on Nikon, I would be using the Z8 because of the autofocus capabilities. I think if you have the same concerns about weight as me, then pairing this lens with a smaller or lighter camera body like the ZF or Z6 and 72 series, for example, would make it more manageable. I also felt the same way about using the 85mm f1.2 on the Z8, but found it was easier to use for longer periods of time on the ZF, for example. And if you wanted to try any with like kind of your arms out a little. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. And then let me, I'll go over that way as well. Hoping there's no spiders. Oh no, that's not nice. Oh, it's really hard. It's like nowhere to go. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, that looks so cool there. And yes, I know I shoot with the LCD screen a lot and some of you will say that it will be more comfortable if I use the viewfinder. First, I do have a whole video about why I like to shoot with the LCD screen, which I'll leave linked down below. Second, even if I do use the viewfinder, I very rarely ever press the camera up against my face anyway. So it would still be floating technically in front of me, albeit just a little closer to my body. I did try shooting with this kit in both ways. And for me personally, it's just a very heavy rig. Yeah, these are like headshots, yeah. We'll get to my second reason in just a moment, but first I want to talk about what we all came here for, the bokeh. This 135mm features 11 rounded diaphragm blades and wow, the bokeh this lens produces is absolutely stunning. I made sure to capture photos in as many different spots with as much bokeh as humanly possible in our location to have heaps of examples to show you. The bucket is super round and very clean. There is a beautiful amount of background to foreground separation. And I love the out of focus fallout area. It's a really smooth transition from in focus to out of focus. You can see this especially in the close up portraits I took. Even the images taken at F2 and F2.5 have beautiful round bucket. From my test images, this lens also has no chromatic aberration that I could find. I'm gonna bring your hands up just here as well for a couple. And then, oh, do you wanna also maybe bring that off your shoulder too? Oh uh, yeah, that's so pretty. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna get one more shot, because I feel like I still need my backlit shot, so I think I've got a cool spot right here. And it is very dreamy. That's so cool. I'm getting like the leaves falling in there as well. Something I really love capturing during my backlit portraits is lens flares and lens ghosting to an extent because it can help make the photo look even dreamier. And I found this lens does a great job at shooting in backlit situations. I had no problems capturing sharp photos of Sophia and I like how she cuts through the backlight. We don't have an entirely washed out image. There is still a fair amount of contrast. When we were in the forest, I found a good backlit spot and was getting some flares, which looked really beautiful. And I love integrating those into my photos. That looks so cool. So here is where I came across the second reason this lens is almost perfect, which is the very vibrant lens flare I captured on a different day when we had a bit more sun. Just like the day of our photo shoot, it was a little hard to get an accurate reading on the lens flare because the entire time I had the lens on loan, there was a very thin layer of wildfire smoke in the sky that was slightly diffusing the sun. So I am hoping I can borrow this lens again in the future one day to test it out during a clearer day. But it looks like there is a pretty colorful and defined lens flare here, which might get distracting in some compositions. Are you able to bring your back knee up a little? The washed out larger lens flares are great to be able to incorporate creatively into your work, but more defined lens flares like this can sometimes be a bit distracting. Luckily, this one's quite small. Just to note, I did not have any filters on the lens here and I was not using a lens hood. Oh, you know what'd be cool? If you like lean your elbow on the stool. Yeah, that looks so cool. Let's move on to video where I have the Z8 set to full time autofocus. This lens looks absolutely beautiful for video as well. We have sharp footage with great bokeh. 
Paired with the Z8, autofocus is really great at keeping up with a moving subject, even at an extremely shallow depth of field. It does such a good job at keeping focus on me as I move towards the camera. You can see focus slipping here and there a little as I get extremely close up, and focus of the Z8 would lose me occasionally when I'm not directly facing the camera. Other times when I look away, it had no problems finding me again. Overall, I am extremely impressed with this 135mm f1.8 planar lens. It's an absolutely beautiful lens that can produce amazing results for both photo and video. This is the quality and consistency I expect from a flagship lens, and it's so great to see Nikon's Fast Prime lens lineup expanding. Now, I'm patiently waiting for a 35mm f1.4 or faster because I'm excited to see what they come up with. That is all I have for today's review on the 135 f1.8. Let me know what you think in the comments, which ones were your favorite photos. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.